Hello everyone, my name is Mikaela de Valletta, also known as The Body Scientist. And in case you don't know me, um, I have a Bachelor of Science in Exercise and Sports Science with a concentration in Strength and Conditioning and a minor in Sports Nutrition. I'm also an NSCA certified uh, Strength and Conditioning Specialist and a USA Olympic Weightlifting um, Coach, along with a bunch of other fitness certifications. I'm a um, pole instructor. I've been working in the fitness industry for 15 years. My specialty is strength and conditioning, and that is what this video is going to be about. Strength and conditioning and technique, okay? So what is strength and conditioning? Basically, strength training is overcoming a force that's greater than yourself. So it's loaded exercises a lot of times. Um, and it's something where it helps you to recruit more muscle fiber. So what, I'm, what I mean is the, the, the benefits of strength training first are increased bone density. So to keep our bones strong, we want weight bearing activity. So for kids, that means like when kids are um, jumping off of things, jumping off of rocks and landing, that makes kids bone strong. But for adults, adults should not be jumping off of things and jumping around unless we can squat one to one and a half times our body weight. So um, if you weigh 150 pounds, you should be able to squat 150 pounds, um, 150 to um, one to 225, you should be able to squat that before you start jumping around because muscles are shock absorbers. Muscles are shock absorbers in the body, so they help to take stress off the joints. Muscles move bone, so my bicep muscle contracts to bring my forearm up. My deltoid muscle contracts to bring my arm up. My quad contracts to bring my quads, my hip flexors, contract to bring my leg up. So muscles move bones. Muscles are also the metabolic tissue in the body, so the more muscle we have, the more um, calories we burn, even at rest. And um, yeah, so muscles are there for support. It's taking stress off the joints. They, they, they move bones and the metabolic tissue in the body, okay? And so that means if you have a, uh, extra body fat and you want to decrease it, you have to build muscle so that you can burn more fat. That means that if you're naturally thin and you want to um, get bigger, you have to build muscle. Muscle is what gives you shape, the shape in the body. If you're an old, an aging person, if you're an aging person, older person, um, as after the age of 30, we lose a certain percentage of our muscle mass every year. It's about 2% after the age of 30 every year. How much muscle we lose each year depends on what we did before 30 and what we do after 30, okay? So it doesn't have to be such a straight decline. If we build muscle before 30 and we continue to engage in weight-bearing activities. And so how that's defined in fitness, like strength training, or um, is something that you cannot do more than 15 reps of. If you can do more than 15 reps, then it's the load uh, that you have on your muscles is not enough to make you any stronger, to increase your bone density or your muscle mass, your muscle, okay? Your lean body mass, we should call it, which is bone and muscle. And so, um, that 15 is a magic number. So let's say you're doing squats at 50 pounds and you can only get to 13. And you do two sets, two or three sets of 13 at 50 pounds. And the next week you come back and you can do two sets of 15. Now you would up that weight, like five pounds. And then maybe you could only get to 14. And you keep doing that till you can do 15 sets again. 15 reps, I'm sorry. 15 reps. But at least two sets at 15 reps. If you can um, do that, it's time to up the weight. So as you strength train, you will um, get stronger. And as you get stronger, you have to up the stimulus. And um, so when you put an outside load, you know, like if I'm doing squats with body weight, it, I'm working my muscles. It's better than doing nothing. But when I put an external load on it, it requires my muscle fibers to activate more. So we recruit more muscle fibers when we put an external load and we're pushing or pulling against that load, okay? So remember, 15 is a magic number. So if you're doing push-ups, of course, you know, no, it's just body weight and you could only do 13 or 10 or whatever that number is, um, good. But once you get to 15 and now you're doing 20 and 25 and 30, it's, that is increasing your muscular endurance. Doing 30 push-ups or doing 30 reps of something will increase your muscular endurance, but not your muscular strength, 
and not your um, lean body mass. So there are ways, there are progressions, there are ways to make things more difficult. So if somebody was doing 30 push-ups and they're like, I need to make this harder, they can um, do clap push-ups, they can do one-arm push-ups, they can put their feet up or something like, bring one leg up. There's a lot of different ways that they, they can make it more difficult. They can change the tempo. You know, they can do the push-ups slower. Like they can say, okay, I'm gonna take five seconds to go down. And so for five seconds, they're slowly going down to the ground. Then maybe they hold it there for two seconds and then maybe they, they push up slowly for five seconds. If that person was doing 30 push-ups before, I can guarantee they won't do 30 push-ups if they do it at that pace. So there's a lot of different ways to um, make things harder so that you do become stronger. So that's the thing about progressions. Doing the same workout all the time, same weight all the time will not make you stronger. Okay, so we have to push ourselves. And I did a video about cardio um, on this page, so you can check it out. And I suggest that you watch it because cardio is not always what people think. It can be anaerobic or aerobic. Anaerobic means, well, aerobic means that the muscles are using oxygen as a fuel. So it's the slow twitch muscle fibers that are working. So when you're doing something at a moderate pace for a longer intensity, you're working your slow twitch muscle fibers and they utilize oxygen, hence aerobic. When you're doing anaerobic activity, you're working your fast twitch muscle fibers. Those muscle fibers have a lot of power and strength, but they burn out within like 25 seconds. So those are the muscle fibers that one uses in like explosive power activities, stop and start activities. It's like a sprinter who's running 100 meters. They're running as fast as they can for like 11, 12 seconds, right? They're not really breathing in that time. They might take one breath and that's it. It's just using everything. You can't sprint for two minutes, okay? Um, in baseball, they're throwing the ball as fast as they can and stopping. They're swinging at the ball as fast as they can and stopping. They're running the first base as fast as they can and stopping. So it's quick burst of speed, right? Um, uh, hockey or in um, basketball is like anaerobic and aerobic. It's both because basketball is a lot of running back and forth. But then there are basketball and soccer. There are moments where you have, you know, you stop and then you jump or you block. or So there, there are power moves within soccer and basketball, but they're also very aerobic, so they're like both. Um, so, and the fast twitch muscle fibers are the muscle fibers that get bigger when we work out, when we exercise. And those are the ones that give us shape. That's anaerobic without oxygen. And um, so both of them can be cardio. And I speak about that in my cardio video, all about cardio video on this page. And all cardio means is that your heart rate is staying up for a certain certain time period. That can happen aerobically or anaerobically. When you do aerobic activity, yes it burns fat, but it burns muscle too. When you do too much of it, what too much is depends on how much muscle you have to begin with, how much fat you have to begin with, and what you ate before, prior to it. But when you do too much cardio, it causes you to burn muscle as well. I mean, sorry, not too much cardio, too much aerobic cardio, too much aerobic exercise can be catabolic, which means it breaks down muscle. But anaerobic, you can also do anaerobic cardio. So, like, for example, somebody could be doing, uh, say I'm going to do five 100-meter sprints. So they sprint 100 meters as quickly as they can, and then they walk back to recovery. So they walk back to recovery, their heart is like this the whole time, or they're walking back to the, to the, the starting line, and then they sprint again as fast as they can, walk back for recovery. So they have breaks, but their heart never stops doing this. As opposed to doing aerobic cardio where someone says I'm going to jog for three miles. So they're jogging at a lower intensity for a long continuous time. The anaerobic way, doing sprints or plyometrics, that um, burns uh, fat and it builds muscle. Whereas aerobic cardio burns fat and it can burn muscle. So that's why when you see people who jog a lot, sometimes they're like skinny fat. Or they're like, I look at joggers a lot, especially in New York, it's a huge jogging city, but everywhere I go, and I notice that joggers a lot of times are like hunched in, and they run like this, and they look like they're in pain a lot of times. Um, but you look at, you know, sprinters, and the legs are developed, abs are developed, like there's actually a shape and a musculature there. And so you can do either one of those to get cardio. But with strength training, though, it's very important. A lot of women and some men think that it's not important. Um, you can get a good upper body workout, depending on where you're starting, without using any weights, depending on what you're doing. But for the legs, since our legs carry us around our entire life, our legs can take a lot. And 
doing squats with weight is one of the most important exercises that you can do. I also have a video on here called All About Squats that I highly suggest you look at. Um, and so basically, I just want you to understand from this video why strength training is important. And technique is everything. Everything. Because if you lift incorrectly, you can hurt yourself. Lifting weights is not a contact sport, so you should never, ever, ever, ever injure yourself lifting weights. I can guarantee you that if you've gotten an injury lifting weights, it is because your lifting technique was incorrect. So a few things real quick about lifting. You always want to have neutral hips, okay? Or right, knees are slightly bent. I don't know if you can see, but my knees are slightly bent. I don't want to have my knees locked out because it's the athletic position, right? If you, if you stand with your knees locked and somebody pushes you, you're just going to fall over. But if you have a bend in your knees and somebody pushes you, you're more grounded, you know? Or in sports, there's always a slight bend in the knee, right? So we have slightly bent knees, our hips are neutral, meaning if our hips are a bowl of water filled to the top, if we stand like this, all the water is going to fall out that way. If we stand like that, it's all going to fall this way. So we want neutral hips, okay? Neutral. Abs engage. So like somebody popped you in the stomach. Abs engage. You're not going to suck it in so much that you can't breathe. Not like that. We're just going to engage them, right? Chest out, shoulders rotated back and down, okay? So this is the starting position for anything that we do. Whether we're doing bicep curls, whether we're doing squats, whether we're doing shoulder presses, it's the same exact um, technique. And breathing is important. So we always want to inhale on the way down, right? So if we're doing bicep curls, as I bring my arms down, I'm inhaling. I go down as low as I can, keeping a slight bend in my elbow. Because we're always going to go through a full range of motion. Then I'm going to hold my breath and squeeze my abs and pull up. And when I get to the top, and my biceps are contracting, I exhale. If I'm doing squats and I have this weight, as I go down, I'm inhaling through my nose because we get my oxygen into our lungs that way. Inhaling the whole time, I get down, I hold my breath, squeeze my abs because that's going to help to protect my spine. And I push up, hold my breath, exhale on top. So we always want to exhale on top. When you're exerting the energy, when the muscle is contracting. So if we're doing push-ups, and this is to say this is the ground, and I'm starting up here, the whole time I'm going down, I'm squeezing my abs, I'm inhaling through my nose, inhale, 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 I get down, squeeze my abs, I hold my breath, I hold my breath and push, squeeze my abs, I exhale on top. So the breathing is critically important, and the reason is that on the inhale, it's filling your inner thoracic cavity with air. So this whole empty space in here in your ribs, the whole time you're inhaling, going down, this whole area is filling with air. Then you hold your breath and squeeze your abs. That's going to help to protect my spine. As I push up, push against this load, when I get to the top, I exhale. Okay? So you let that, you let that air out then on top. So bicep curls, if I'm doing, you know, shoulder press up on my head, same thing. I'm going to inhale. Then I'm going to hold my breath, squeeze my abs and push. <sighs> Exhale on top. On the way down, I'm inhaling. Hold my breath and contract my abs. Push. <sighs> Exhale on top. You always want to have control. So we're never swinging weights. You never use momentum. If you're ever going to do this, then you're um, not strong enough to lift that. If you have to... Ugh, like, there should be no jerking, no swinging. Always complete control over the weight. Complete control over the movement. And only the muscle that is working should be, only muscle that you're working out should be working. So if I'm doing my biceps, all my biceps should be contracting, right? I'm not, I shouldn't be doing all of this or trying to push my hips. That means it's too heavy. So 15 reps means you're fatigued at 15 reps, meaning if I am doing bicep curls, Let's say I get, I have a certain weight. Let's say I get to 12, I have control. Now, in order for me to do the 13th one, I have to do this and I gotta push my hips forward a little bit, or add a little extra up. That means you're done. So fatigue is as many as you can do with the correct technique. And one thing I call mental fatigue is when people can do more, but they stop because it burns so much. Like, they might be doing an exercise and it burns so much, and then they think they're fatigued and they stop. That's not what fatigue is. 
When you feel the burn, like really burning you and challenging you, really focus on your breathing even more. For keep focusing on your breathing and keep focusing on doing that movement. Once you know that in order to do one more, you're gonna have to use some momentum or some extra oomph, you're gonna have to come out of your form to make it, to make it work. That means that you're fatigued and you're done. So that's the guidelines that you want to use. And just like in yoga, when you're strength training, you need to constantly be focused on your technique, your form, and your breathing so that you don't hurt yourself and that you can get through it and get the most out of it. And um, strength training is, again, it's important for the elderly. I have a video on here about exercise for the elderly because as we age, we're losing muscle. So for the elderly, it will help them be able to move better. It will help them you know, keep their shape and keep their body together. It will help take stress off the joints um, and keep their metabolism up. You know, For men, it helps with their testosterone and um but kids kids should not be lifting weights so i think like it's like the guidelines might have been like the un under the age of 16 or until the growth plates are done um the, the growth plates are sealed because when you lift too soon it can stunt your growth and there are um and, and boys are done growing later than women girls even you know a lot of times boys are like 20 and they're still growing so you have to be careful with that you know lifting too heavy too soon 12 and 13 year olds should not be lifting weights. Um, body weight is absolutely fine for that age. And so I think that I have said everything I need to say in this strength training video. Uh, technique is everything. Uh, your program design is everything. You always wanna do the hardest exercises first. Multi-joint, most difficult exercises first. Free weights are like the best way to work because it requires you to engage your core. When you sit in machines that stabilize you, like if you're doing a chest, uh, we don't rows, and you're sitting in a machine where the pad is against your chest, and you're sitting here pulling it back. You don't have to stabilize your abs in order to do it. And sometimes people have bad form and they're hunched over or anything, and they're just being lazy. Where if you like are using cables, um, you have to squeeze your abs. You're keeping your shoulders back, chest out, abs engaged, hips neutral, knees slightly bent, and I'm pulling back and I'm squeezing, and then I inhale and I come forward. And I have to squeeze my abs in order not, not to get yanked forward. Because you see, I never lose my form. I stay here, it's only, only my rhomboids are working. I'm not doing that. That's wrong, okay? Always wanna have control, always wanna focus on the muscles that you're working. Visualize them contracting. 